John 15, 18. If the world hates you, keep in mind that it hated me first. The words of the most blessed, the greatest prophet who ever lived, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. In the words of Dixon White, it has to do with morality. This video has to do with morality. And there is no reason why I shouldn't be able to quote common men who perhaps you have never heard of. Former racists. Truth is truth. In the clips following this video, you'll see angry speeches. And this video was made on the 21st, December. 2015. My New Year's resolution, which I intend to keep, is to make nothing but calm videos and to avoid being drugged. If there's argument is that my behavior necessitates drugging, then it is not a big deal for me to negate or to nullify that argument with perhaps correct behavior. I do not agree with their argument, but for the sake of the children, humanity, for the sake of God, my Christian family, my Christian ancestors, my ancestors, all of humanity, I will accommodate society, especially those who push mainstream social norms. They are trying to provoke me and drug me in order to help justify in the eyes of society and the government, force medicating me, drugging me, taking me to the psych ward. So you will only see artistic expressions of anger when I highlight the fact that I'm a warrior. And in my martial art demonstrations, all of my speeches will be calm other than the types of videos I just named. I will actively seek out uncontrolled opposition. I'm a man who has the interests of God in mind. I do not hate Muslims or Jews, but I have made the lifelong choice to be a Christian, and I never stop being a Christian, not even for a moment. I just considered Islam as a man of higher thought would. I'm not going to argue translations of the Bible as much, and I will try to avoid arguing with, about the Bible at all. I will stick to the morality in the Bible, the morality that unites us all. I will, however, touch on war and when it should be applied. I believe in spiritual warfare first and foremost, a war of words perhaps, arguing the validity and the truth in scripture and how it is conducive to creating a society of compassion, fellowship and love between man. All those who love morality take my side. The opposition view, the Satanists, the worst criminals, the LGBT community, at least for the most part, the feminists, the atheists and the racists will be treated fairly as long as they do not try to cheat us, manipulate us, as long as they do not take a military stance against us. I apologize to all the good people that I have offended in the past. Perhaps when I pointed out that white, white, uh, white mainstream social norms are part of Babylon's system, perhaps I was too harsh the way I put it, and I apologize. Believe it or not, it is not easy for me to apologize. I struggle with these sorts of things, as do many people do. 
And on that note, dear Lord, forgive me for all my shortcomings. I pray to you publicly not to look good or to pay you lip service, but to be an example of humility. Forgive my trespasses. Forgive my shortcomings. If it is your will, if it is in your heart to do so. If it is not, and I must burn for whatever mistakes I may make, and let your will be done. Let it burn hot. I do not want to go to hell, but I accept your judgment, whatever it may be. Amen. Without further ado, I'll give you the next two clips. And keep in mind, this video was made on the 21st, and these are the last of my angry speeches, the last of my vituperation, perhaps. After this video, let it end. God bless you all. First thing I want to point out is that before I even started watching this, I said, you know this, I've been saying this, those of you who know damn well, I've been saying this for a long time about the coalition against Christianity. I have a bunch of namby-pamby scums saying, there's no coalition against Christianity. Then I have other people subtly trying to direct me away from Christianity and the Abrahamic faiths. Okay, now listen to what this person says. Okay, this person is one, a person that many of you consider an expert. And she's a woman. Okay, remember, feminists are disproportionately liberals. Obviously, atheists are racist, Satanists. Well, maybe not racist, but Satanists, criminals, LGBT, and psychiatric mental health movements. A lot of neocons are racist. Um, and there is a liberal form of racism in the Democratic Party. It has to do with abortion and Margaret Sanger and eugenics. Anyway, listen to this. And I want, to, I want all you candy-ass bitches who pretend like there isn't a coalition against Christianity and it isn't the groups that I've been saying for years and years, the LGBT, who are obviously fucking Democrats, gay rights, is liberals, you know, democratic movement. Anyway. And the essence of uh, liberal democracy is to reject the faith in God. Not God in, in the broad sense, but faith in the Christian God, uh, I mean the biblical God. So the goal is for the liberal democracy actually to destroy, to deconstruct, and to, di and, and to desecrate uh, the Christian uh, faith. And now we're talking about uh, persecution of Christians in the Middle East, but it's also going on right here in Europe and also in, in, in the United States. That's what I'm telling you people. That is what I've been telling you people. Why do you think I'm being gang stalked? Because I've been made a video of homosexuality is a sin according to the Bible. I talk about Illuminati groups. I talk about the Enlightenment. Oh, the Enlightenment saved us all. It saved us all. I'm going to bring up the Enlightenment and make another clip. And, you know, let me, I'm going to let her finish. Then I'm going to end this clip make another clip where I show you what the Enlightenment on record says Masonry was part of the Enlightenment on record Thomas Jefferson and other famous you know people put the principles of the Enlightenment which was propagated by in Masonic lodges and coffee shops on record into the very fabric into the principles of America the Illuminati and destroying Christianity is the American way what do you think pragmatism was you know one step at a time. Let me, let me. And um, here, I mean, Christian symbols are taken out of the public places. And when Christians talk openly about the faith, they get mocked, they get ridiculed, they get labeled as kind of uh, unintelligent. They are marginalized culturally and isolated well, socially. Okay. And, 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 and also keep in mind, that is why they tried to make me a radical Islamist. Think, people. Isn't it interesting how RT reports on what CNN and all these other country uh, uh, news places won't? I can't find anything about the pharma costs on CNN and all this stuff. The West is indifferent to the pharma costs. The West is indifferent when it comes to the persecutions of Christians. And perhaps since Putin is a conservative, perhaps, I'm not a conservative myself, but perhaps that has something to do with this. See, there are conservatives who want to conserve segregation and racism. The conservatives who want to conserve Christianity are in the right. Make no mistake, no pun intended, no double entendre intended. I'm just going to read this to you, you know, until we get to the good part. 
You can read the rest. I'm going to read the first three paragraphs. This is on Wikipedia. Um, I assure you this is accurate. I would love for anybody to tell me that this is fucking complete false, complete nonsense. The Enlightenment known in French as the Cicel de Lumeres, de Lumeres, uh, Century of Enlightenment, in Polish, Auschwitzny, uh, no idea, in German as the Aufklärung, was a philosophical movement which dominated the world ideas of Europe in the 18th century. The principles of the Enlightenment thinkers were liberty, progress, reason, tolerance, fraternity, and ending the abuse of the church and state. In France, the central doctrines of the Lumerias, oh, it's been a while since I took French, was individual liberty and religious tolerance. Okay, this is key. In opposition to the principle of absolute monarchy and the fixed dogmas of the Roman Catholic Church, the Enlightenment was marked by increasing empiricism, scientific rigor, and reductionism, along with increased questioning of religious orthodoxy. And before I even finish, I want you all to understand this very well. In order for them to achieve this, they had to subvert their enemies. They had to infiltrate their enemies' institutions. I'm not saying that the Roman Catholic Church are the good guys. I actually am saying that there are pagans in the Roman Catholic Church and in other churches. There always has been from its onset onwards, from its beginning onwards, and they have been infiltrated since the 18th century by Illuminists on record. Okay. Right, where was I? The Enlightenment was called increasing empiricism, scientific rigor, and reductionism, along with increasing questioning of religious orthodoxy. Okay? So they're going after the Orthodox and the Catholic Church, and they have infiltrated every church to bring in the principles of the age of enlightenment it was followed by the age of romanticism then the age of realism so when you truly think about how this works you know the enlightenment principles never left us the age of romanticism part of the romantic ideas were romantic enlightenment ideas and when the age of realism kicked in it was the age of real you know, of, of down, quote unquote, down to earth enlightenment, scientific realism, if you will. French historians traditionally placed the enlightenment between 1715, the year that Louis XIV died, Louis XIV died, and 1789, the beginning of the French Revolution. Some recent historians begin the period in the 1620s. This is important because, you know, going back to 1877 to 1954, I recently covered in, in another video was the Jim Crow era. So the timeline is fucking important, okay? All these people were fucking racist as fuck. Don't think for one second that the Enlightenment was about just eradicating racism. That is a fucking joke. Anyway, um, some reasons okay, begin the period in the 1620s with the start of the scientific revolution. The philosophies... The philosophers, the French term for the philosophers of the period, widely circulated their ideas through meetings at scientific academies, Masonic lodges, excuse me, I accidentally clicked it because I was trying to highlight it so you all see it, Masonic lodges, literary stations and coffee houses, and through printing books and pamphlets. The ideas of the Enlightenment undermined the authority of the monarchy and the church and paved the way for the revolutions of the 18th and 19th century. A variety of 19th century movements, including liberalism and neoclassism, traced their intellectual heritage back to the Enlightenment. Ironically, this is what, just what I was talking about, how the Enlightenment ideas carried on. So you had these different ages of romanticism, the age of realism. Then you have the rise of liberalism and neoclassism, excuse me, classicism. And they trace their intellectual heritage, their ideas carried over, okay? And so the foundation of this country was the age of enlightenment. And you have seen the evolution of the intellectual heritage, you know, the evolution of the intellectual ideas that came from the age of the enlightenment. Now, Last paragraph I'm going to read. You can read the rest if you want. This has to do with them propping up people who see things their way so you respect them and they can continue these enlightenment frauds or ideas. The age of enlightenment was preceded by and closely associated with the scientific revolution. Early philosophers who work in, whose work influenced the enlightenment included Francis Bacon, Descartes. Remember, you have these people saying, Shakespeare didn't write that. It was Francis Bacon. Okay. I don't know if it's true or not, but anyway, Locke and Spinoza. The major figures of the Enlightenment include Césaire, Beccaria, Voltaire, Denis Diderot, John Jacques Rousseau, David Hume, Adam Smith, and Immanuel Kant. 
Some European rulers, including Catherine II of Russia, Joseph II of Austria, and, and Frederick I of Prussia tried to apply enlightenment through thought on religious and political tolerance, which became known as enlightened absolutism. The Americans, Benjamin Franklin and Thomas Jefferson, came to Europe during the period and contributed actively to the scientific and political debate. And this is the last part. I didn't want to make this video this long, but this is part is one of the most important parts. And the ideals of the Enlightenment were incorporated into the United States Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States. So for those of you who might have missed it, Masonic lodges, masonry, was part of the foundation of this country, not because they were the, some of the signers, just because they're some of the signers of the Declaration of Independence. But on record, the ideas of masonry went into making this country. That's why there are masons on every level guiding it through. Okay, Mason cops, I showed you the Masonic police badges. There are Masons in political office, Masons in political movements. There are different groups of Masonry that sprung up in the last couple hundred years, you know, Eastern stars, and there are, you know, pseudo Masonic movements, the, you know, Golden uh, Dawn, heretic move, hermetic uh, movements, hermetic orders, um, and on and on and on, okay? We live in a country that is dominated by secret societies on record from its beginning onward, and you still have stupid ass motherfuckers it's a conspiracy theory. thinking that they're smart. And what is that? What is that? What is that? That is hiding behind mainstream social norms, whatever ethnic group or race that may have originated these social norms is almost irrelevant. Because the bottom line is that it's hiding behind mainstream social norms to avoid the truth. The same thing they're doing with my top martial artist challenge, just in a different way. Can't you see what's going on here? Don't you see what is going on here? These people have always had a problem with the morality in the Bible, and they have teamed up. It's a coalition. It is. Satanists the worst criminals, the LGBT community, feminists, atheists, and racists, and they use different institutions to do it. The Psychological Warfare Unit of the military. They use intelligence agencies. They use the education inst educational institutions. They use psychiatry and mental health. They use Hollywood. They use pretty much everything you can think of. Don't you see? You know, the word conspiracy, I'd say, would apply pretty fucking well here. I mean, that is what it is. You can call it a massive collaboration. You can call it a movement, covert and otherwise. But it is a fucking conspiracy. While they're pretending it's not. While they refuse to highlight it. The media refuses to highlight it. Educational institutions refuse to highlight it. We should be taught from our beginning onward that in, in, in education in the education system that there is a Masonic conspiracy that dominates this country and they do not give people a fair shake and they prop up a bunch of candy ass namby pamby bitches for you to respect in the entertainment industry in fucking professors in colleges on TV in the media and on and on they prop up bitches. Do you understand me? And they believe in enlightened absolutism. Oh, it's because it's political tolerance and the scientists are going to save us from the religious people. Yeah, even though it's a bunch of scientific theory and science is imperfect. And once you follow it dogmatically as if it is the truth, you kill half a million people a year in Western countries alone. Why every fucking money hungry, self-indulgent piece of shit pretends it's no big deal to do eugenics on people because that is the scientific self-direction of humanity, right? Right? Because science is eugenics. Science is sterilization. Science is eugenics. Science is political warfare, chemical warfare, biological warfare. That, those things are a part of science. And that is a part of this religious scientism that we see today on every level of society while you pretend that it's not. Those 
ducks. Those scumbags. They're killing everybody because science saves us, right? Science is the answer, right? We're destroying the earth with fracking and pollution and corrupted water, polluted water, poisoned water. Because science is the solution and these religious people who love nature and believe that God gave us the earth and we should value it and that our body is a temple must be brought down because they are a threat to society. So science subverts them. The art of subversion, the art of war, the science of subversion, the science of war, the science of co-option, the science of infiltration, the science of total war. The science of covert warfare. The science of mass surveillance. The science of oppression. The science of smear campaigns, noise campaigns. The science of government harassment. The science of gang stalking. Because science is so precious. Oh, and morality needs to be destroyed because it's hindering human progress. Oh, 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 oh. 